Over the next few minutes, we will show you how to use remote data access and what to check for optimum performance. Prerequisites. It's necessary for the sysadmin or data owner to set up the remote data access service, share the company file, and set up users before using remote data access, as outlined in this video. Remote data access setup steps are outlined in the video entitled Remote Data Access Setup Share Company, which can be accessed from the notes section below this video or via Knowledge Base Article Number 105517 Remote Data Access Setup. Remote Data Access Multi User Setup steps are outlined in the video entitled Remote Data Access Multi User Setup and User Management, which can be accessed from the notes section below this video or via Knowledge Base Article Number 105521, Remote Data Access Setup Users. Both KB articles are accessible from sagekb.com. This video is intended for all remote data access users, especially those who have been invited to use remote data access by the system admin user, usually the business owner and or the company data file owner. Note, the number of users or Sage ID accounts that can access the company data file simultaneously using the remote data access service in multi-user mode is determined by the number of Sage 50 Cloud Accounting Canadian Edition licenses held by those users. It's best practice to check your end user license agreement, or EULA, to determine the number of concurrent users you are licensed for. The person who shared the file or a data owner, usually the system admin user, counts as one user. Only this data owner can invite additional users. It's best practice for invited users to provide their preferred email address to the person responsible for adding users to remote data access, as this email address will be used to create a Sage ID account. If users already have a Sage ID account, please provide the system admin with the email address already registered to the Sage ID service. Doing this will avoid creating multiple and or duplicate accounts if you have multiple email addresses. Each remote data access user will need to have the following to access the remote data access service. Have Sage 50 Cloud Accounting Canadian Edition 2020.2 or later installed. In other words, the user has a licensed copy of the software. Have a valid cloud subscription. In other words, the user has a service plan in good standing and not expired. Have received an invitation email from another user. In other words, the user provided their email address and or Sage ID, and they have successfully been added to the shared company file. Some examples of users are as follows. Colleagues working in the same company, a bookkeeper accountant and or SAN member, and or other business partner, and or self in order to work from home or work away from a primary office where a local data file is stored or backed up. Please note the same email address or Sage ID cannot be logged in twice. This means the system admin cannot be logged in on two different computers, for instance, one at the office and one at home. If the same Sage ID attempts to log in twice, you'll get the following error message. The company file is already open and shared. Now, if you've received an invite to use remote data access, here's what you need to know. How to use remote data access. Your journey starts with an email that is automatically generated when the system and user adds your email address or Sage ID to their list of users. Here's a sample of the email. We're going to assume that you've successfully downloaded, installed, and activated Sage 50 per step one in the email. If you haven't, please reference the notes section below this video and or visit Knowledge Base article number 100797, 2020 full product download, and or KB article number 102293, 2020.2 product update. These will help. When you open 2020.2, the welcome screen displays the option to connect to a shared company per step two in the email. This window will then display the three steps required to connect. Click OK. In the next screen, you'll be asked for your email address or Sage ID if you already have one. Notice, in the email there's a message. If you have a different Sage ID or you want to use another email address, 
ask the sender to invite you again using the preferred email address. If you attempt to use a different email address than the one you were invited with, your Sage ID will not be connected to the shared company file. Per the email, ask the sender to invite you again using the preferred email address and abort this invitation. If the email address is the correct one per step three in the email, when prompted, log in or sign up for a Sage ID with the same email address that received the invitation email. If you already have a Sage ID, following the Sage ID login screen, you'll be prompted for your password. If you're creating a new Sage ID, following the Sage ID login screen, you'll be prompted for your name and password. You'll then be sent an additional email with a verification code. Once your Sage ID is registered, you'll be prompted to connect to the company file that was shared with you in the invitation email. If you're a bookkeeper or other accounting professional and have received invitations to more than one client file, these will be listed here. Select the row and click Connect. You will then be prompted to save a copy of the file locally. This is the file that will communicate with the Remote Data Access Service. It's very important to save the SAI or SAJ in your root folder, your C drive. Create a Sage 50 data folder if you don't already have one. It is not recommended to save the file to another cloud service, for instance, OneDrive or Dropbox, that auto syncs. This may create duplicate and or corrupted copies of the file. The final step is to choose how do you want to open this shared company. Your choices are single user, multi-user, and read-only mode. Most users will choose to work in multi-user mode. If you're the only user, for instance, you're working from home after hours, you may choose to work in single user mode as you won't affect other users by doing so. If your licensed users are maxed or another user is working in single user mode, you can still work in read-only mode, which allows you to perform data lookups and reporting functions. Alternatively, if other users are already logged into multi-user mode, you will not get the option to log into single user mode. This window will only give two options, multi-user and read-only mode. And if a user is logged into single user mode, you will only get one option to log in to read-only mode. Last, there are a few functions that can only be performed while working in single user mode. These include local backups, adding users, and other functions. These same functions were previously only available in Sage 50 single user mode. It's a best practice to communicate a maintenance window to other users in advance of needing to work in single user mode. With this in mind, you may notice that the ability to go to file and switch from single user to multi-user or switch from multi-user to single user has been removed. This is due to the authentication required for Sage ID users. Therefore, to switch modes, it is necessary to close the company file. Then, on the welcome screen, choose either open a recently used company or select an existing company as the connect to shared company option was previously selected on this screen. And then log in with a different mode. Finally, what to check for optimum performance. There are many factors that can create latency in posting transactions when working remote data access. It is a best practice to consider your working environment and set yourself and other remote data access users up for the best experience, especially while working in multi-user mode. Factors which can positively or negatively impact your remote data access experience include, but are not limited to, your desktop or laptop specs, your internet browser, your internet service provider, including your internet plan speed and how high volume traffic is handled by your provider, what other computer programs you're running concurrently, what other internet usage is running. For instance, if another user on your home or work network are downloading large video files, updates, or other heavy traffic usage. Decreasing the number of users, applications running, and or increasing internet speeds will always improve your and other remote data access users' experience and reduce or eliminate latency issues. A checklist of factors that may impact your remote data access multi-user experience and that can be used for troubleshooting can be accessed from the notes section below this video or via Knowledge Base Article Number 105523 
performance issues with remote data access. Congratulations! You now know how to use remote data access and what to check for optimum performance.